Hey guys, welcome back to Dimitri's Garage. It's a very hot Texas day out here. I hope it's warm where you are. And we're going to be working a little on my truck. Now, my friends have been kind of calling this truck King Tut, and I think it's going to stick, and I'm going to start calling it that. So the reason is, it was a LLC that sold the truck, and it was called King Tut LLC. When my friends saw it on the temp tag, they were, you know, really amused and started calling it truck King Tut. Guys, I apologize if there's a lot of wind. It's uh, Texas, and it's flat and windy, so not a whole lot I can do about it. But... Hopefully you guys can see the new wheels I got, and these are from a 2019 Platinum, and they're 20 inch by 8 inch, and they came with larger tires. So that puts me about an inch bigger than the original tires were. So the other day when I was driving after getting them installed, you know, my Speedo would show 60, and I'm really doing almost 70 or something like that. What I need to do today is use Ford IDS to correct the Speedo. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at those wheels. You guys can tell me what you think. I think they look really good. So taking a closer look at these wheels, I really like the spoke design. It kind of called out to me. And uh, it actually came with some really nice tires. These are the Michelin AT2s. So just to give you an idea on tire rack, these alone, just the tires, are $1,200 with tax and install. I paid about 1500 and change so like really when you think about it that's a great deal this got me tires and wheels for just a little more a couple hundred dollars more all right let's pop this thing open and uh see what we're working with and get the ford idea started i do still like my cat skin interior it is you know starting to wear in a little bit you know is it as good as the audi leather no it's not but honestly for the price even if I have to replace it every few years, it's probably worth it. Maybe I'll try some higher end stuff next time. I don't know. Anyhow, let's get started. I got the IDS plugged in. Now we're going to be booting up the laptop and trying this out. Hopefully the camera angles are pretty good. It's kind of hard to squeeze them in here and really get a good look. All right, IDS is booted up. We're going to get the truck into ignition. I'm going to start a new session. All other. All right, now we're connected, guys. So let's get started in here. All right, we're back in our kind of normal menu here. We're going to select module programming. And then we're going to tick the blue tick mark at the bottom here all right so we're gonna go into programmable parameters and we're gonna go to tire size all right so on this list for rear tire size at the top we're gonna select the 20s it says at the top lt 275 65 r20s so that's what we want to pick that's the size i have now that's the modern size and that's kind of the size they used before so same size it should just work we're gonna go ahead and tick the blue button now it's going to prompt you to set the ignition switch to on, so let's go ahead and make sure it's on. I know it's on already. And boom, it says ABS module complete, so real easy. Now it says set ignition switch to off, so we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the ignition, and I'm kind of curious to see what other options there are in there. Maybe there's some other fun stuff we can change. Nah, nothing cool in there. And guys, what we're modifying here is called the as-built data. That's kind of the data about how the truck was put together, and has the various options so the truck's software and hardware can collaborate together. It wouldn't make sense to write totally different computer programs for each truck and so they have these parameters that kind of control how everything will work so you can just tell it you know this truck has this feature or that feature one cool thing you guys should learn about as build data if you don't already it's actually possible to enable features that maybe your truck didn't come with like in my audi i've enabled all kinds of stuff that comes in the more expensive version because all they do is cripple it in software they don't actually remove anything from the car you're when you pay for the option they're just enabling the software so with a little tuner you can usually just enable all kinds of stuff like for instance people have figured out how to enable lane assist like i didn't buy lane assist on my car because i didn't feel i needed it but people have figured out how to just enable that so that's something interesting i'm not going to enable that i don't like the lane assist but it's a cool feature other people have been doing like video in motion where you can watch dvds and stuff i actually haven't poked around in here too much i'm kind of hoping that there's a setting that lets me disable the seat belt chime and guys please don't ride without your seat belt and actually if i could disable some of this other dinging i would too so it also has a separate tire size in here that i just realized and it has rear and then just tire size so i'm just going to set both in case for some reason, they should be both set. So we'll pick 612 again. 612 is the code for the right size for this, which is the 275, 65, 20s. I was not able to figure out how to defeat the seatbelt chime in Ford IDS. It's possible I just don't have that feature in my version. It's a little outdated. Or maybe it's just not possible on these trucks through the as-build data. So now what we're going to do is try a sequence that I found on the internet that's supposed to actually do the same thing with just the controls inside the truck. Hopefully I'm able to do that and then I won't be annoyed by that chime anymore. Before following the procedure, make sure that the parking brake is set. The gear shift is in P, the ignition switch is off, doors are closed, safety belt is unbuckled, park headlamps are in off position. Oh, auto lamps are okay. Turn the ignition switch to the run position, but do not start the engine. Now I have 60 seconds to prepare the next steps. Buckle and unbuckle the safety belt three times, ending with the safety belt unbuckled. One, two, three. Turn on the park lamps headlamps. Turn off the park lamp headlamps. 
park and then off buckle and unbuckle the safety belt three times ending with the safety belt unbuckled two three after step five the safety belt warning light will be turned off for three seconds within seven seconds the safety belt warning light turn off buckle and buckle the safety belt uh oh my god this is crazy this will disable the belt binder. All right, so in theory. Ooh, let's get some AC going. I am sweating. So far, no chime, but I think it lets you go a while before it really chimes. Ooh. Oh, nope, still doing it. So maybe I did something wrong. We'll give it another shot here. Let me find a, actually that was a nice shady spot. I'm gonna back up and do it in the shade there. This procedure is insane, guys. Finally found somebody that on an 07 is having the exact same issue I'm having. They got a different procedure here, so let's try that. So parking, gear, all doors closed, unbuckled, lights off. So we're going to turn the ignition switch to off. Take the key out. We're going to turn the ignition switch on. Light is on. Wait until light turns off. So now the difference is we're going to buckle and unbuckle nine times instead of six times. So there's no light thing here. It says not to do the light thing for this version. So maybe the 07s have different firmware. Come on, go off, go off, go off. Okay, nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, nope, that didn't work. Yeah, I just don't get it. The only thing I can think is maybe I'm being too fast. I'm going to try going slow. Maybe they don't really intend for you to go super quick. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine oh there we go oh i was just going too fast guys i see it blinking all right but now in theory i should be okay this truck is like all turbo noise i love it like that just all turbo anyhow we're gonna go real slow just creep up to these mailboxes this is actually where i get my mail so I need to swing back. I got a whole bunch of new waxes for us to try out, guys. This is going to be cool. I've got like six already at the house, and there's two more in that mailbox. I cannot wait to pull that out today. In the next few weeks, we're going to be doing another big shootout and see how some really cool new stuff works. All right. I don't even get a warning light up here anymore. I think we're good. Yeah, we did it. All right. Now I'm going to put it on, and we'll go for a test drive. And, guys, if you do follow these instructions, like I said, don't... Uh, don't drive around without your seat belt at any meaningful speed. All right, I'm gonna set the cruise control to something like 30. Yeah, we're dead on, guys. I just love the turbo noise on this thing. Let's pop a window open, get you guys some more of that turbo noise. If you're into like turbo diesel sounds, that is a fun sound. So guys, this is like bang on right now. I'm pretty happy. I've heard that auto ingenuity can also make this correction. The SCT, I didn't even try. It has a menu for it, but everybody tells me that it doesn't work. Wait, will it flip? Nah, it doesn't even flip. All right, no CarPlay. Ooh, 2% battery. Yes, CarPlay. I'm already done with my drink. There's nothing, nothing but ice in there, so. I just want to get to a higher speed and see what the margin of error is. Man, my iPhone, whenever like I'm driving in traffic now, people are causing me to break and my iPhone's tapping on the screen and uh, doing crazy like stuff in the menus. Like it got into the settings earlier. I don't know what was happening. So I just threw my reverse camera on. That way you guys get a cool view out of the back of the truck. I got one buddy that whenever he rides with me, he insists we toggle that on because he just really enjoys looking out of that. The phone only has a one hertz refresh rate. So if you're not really big in GPS tech, uh, one hertz refresh rate means it refreshes once a second. So that's why you'll see it refresh every second. Uh, so the phone, there's there's going to be a lot of drift. It's nowhere near as accurate as like a 10 hertz GPS device. So we'll just get to 75 and call it a day. Don't need to make any major violations. And there's people like all up behind me that are going to be mad that I'm only five over. But guess what? I'm in the right lane. Well, this truck who's like tailgating me is going to be really unhappy when I go in the left lane to pass this other guy. Like that's going to make him pretty unhappy there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he didn't just pass me instead of tailgating me. But it's Texas, you know, we gotta be a little passive aggressive. Or maybe he's checking my camera out, I don't know, sometimes people do that. Well, I guess he doesn't want to tailgate me anymore. 
I do love how high some of our speed limits are. This is a very fast highway. Some spots are as low as 60, but most of that highway we were just on has some very high speed limits, usually 75 and above. Um, I think there may be even a spot with 85, but don't quote me on it. It might only be 80, but we do have places where it is like 85 though, I, I believe. And, and the cool thing is with such high speed limits, most people really aren't speeding. This just proves that cars are as good as they are and people drive as good as the cars are. When most of these 65 mile an hour type of speed limits came to fruition, cars, like, there was no ABS. They came up with these speed limits 60 years ago. It's, it's insanity that, you know, more of the country doesn't have these higher limits. I was driving in New York recently and I just couldn't figure out, like, how to get anywhere. I was literally on stretches of road like this that went on for miles and miles with 30 mile an hour speed limits. Insane. That was just insane. And I mean, I get it. I'm sure they made the limit when it was horse and buggy there. And of course, if you're driving something like my Audi, you know, I mean, 80 feels just like a perfect cruising speed. So yeah, I, I just, I hope more and more places go like Texas and start getting these high speed limits. Um, people just need to be better drivers in terms of not being aggressive, not tailgating, not cutting people off, uh, using, using their signals, um, you know, just being more courteous. The accidents are not really all from just the speed. Most of it is from carelessness, really. Typically actually a mistake that more than one driver makes, meaning you could have probably avoided the accident if you were paying attention, but because the other guy wasn't paying attention either, and you weren't paying attention, now you two hit each other. Now he may be more at fault, he might have been the one that lost control, or maybe he broke a greater rule than you did, but I've seen so many accidents where the one driver who lost control is clearly in the wrong, but the other driver could have avoided the accident if he wasn't, you know, gazing out at the stars or whatever. So I actually firmly believe that we, if we got rid of statutory speed limits and instead started to firmly enforce sort of a driving, I don't want to say etiquette, but uh, a better driving culture or maybe driving discipline, a better driving discipline. If we really started enforcing it, like, look, I was getting, why was that guy tailgating me earlier? Open left lane. And then he wouldn't even pass me. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. This is where the accidents are coming from. Cars are very capable of going 80 miles an hour all over the country. Even cars made 10 years ago, 12 years ago, like this truck are more than capable of doing 80 safely. The big problem is going to be when that guy tailgating me rear ends me when I have to slam on my brakes because there's an accident ahead of me then that accident is going to get really, really big. We need to get rid of statutory laws about speeding and, and really enforce it as a, um, as a driving discipline. Meaning if you're tailgating people or zigzagging through traffic, that is when we're going to give you a ticket. And I've seen this in New York so, so much. My mom will get a ticket for the littlest infraction in speeding. And I will watch people passive aggressively tailgating each other on the highway, right past the police, they don't care. Why? Because the tailgating is harder to prosecute. They don't care. They'd rather pop my mom for seven over than the tailgater who's aggressively an inch from other people's bumper or zigzagging through traffic. That guy, they don't care about. Really, ultimately, guys, the big issue is just courtesy towards other drivers and, and road discipline. Well, guys, I'm almost home. The Speedo's perfect with the IDS. Hopefully, you weren't too annoyed by my ranting.